Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ansina Dira binti Muhammad Zalani and I'm the first presenter. First of all, I will clarify or explain a little bit about the background information of the book that we have chosen, which is Ibn Rush Metaphysics, a translation with introduction of Ibn Rush commentary on Aristotle Metaphysics, book lamb. I will talk about Ibn Rush first. Hmm. For your information, the origin of this book titled Tafsir Mabat Jang at Tabi'ah. His real name was Abu Awalik Muhammad bin Ahmad bin Rush. He was born in Cordoba, Spain and was known throughout his life by his name as Ibn Rush and known in Latin West as Everest. He often read commentaries on Aristotle's work, wrote on Plato's Republic, and so on. He works on medicine too and he has published a book titled Kitab al Kitri. Before this, I've mentioned about the main author, right? Now, I will tell about the background of the translator of this book, which is Charles Tenekwan, who worked as a professor emeritus of Arabic language and literature in the University of Geneva. For your information, this book, Tafsir Mabad dan Atobia, has been translated by Charles Tenekwan as a photomechanical refrain titled Ibn Rush Metaphysics, a translation with introduction of Ibn Rush commentary on Aristotle Metaphysics book long. This translated book has been published in 1986 and has been edited and compiled by Hans Dyber, a German orientalist. Okay, my name is Nurhanusna binti Lokman. I will talk about a little bit theme of this book. Okay, Ibn Rush Metaphysics books discuss about metaphysics, which is on metaphysical and cosmological views of Aristotle. According to Ibn Rush, uh, the truth had to be sought not through independent investigation of the work, but interpretation of Aristotle's writings. He attempted to restore what is considered the original teachings of Aristotle and oppose the Neoplatonist tendencies of early Muslim thinkers such as Al-Farabi and Ibn Sina or recorded as Avicenna. The main discussion in this book is metaphysics but here, metaphysics does not specifically deal with God or a theology all alone. Instead, it has been in a discussion with classes of being as being or the analogical idea of a being. In this book also contain about other aspects like the aims of metaphysics, uh, spontaneous generation and from the prime mover, human and the being intellect, and uh, Ibn Rush astronomy. The book consider as a fiction book if the content focusing on the metaphysical aspect because the discussion throughout the whole book is mainly about uh, some aspect of the inner, incorporeal, supernatural, uh, spiritual or transcendent aspect of human experience. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Sarah Binti Azmi with metric number of 1191791. I will be presenting on my part about the main ideas from the book of Ibn Rushd Metaphysic or in Arabic the book was originally named as Tafsir Mabada At-Tabi'ah. So before I go further about my explanation on the book, I would love to give you guys about the exposure about metaphysics. So in case if you have gotten metaphysics is under the branch of philosophy that is concerned with the nature of existence. So briefly that is all uh, that, that is what uh, the book is all about. And physics, uh, metaphysics is all about. So the main idea from the book, the book discusses about metaphysics, but metaphysics here does not specifically deal with God or theology or alone. But the discussion expand with many subjects such as the classes of being as being, analogical idea of being, and even the subject of intellect, which is under the study of Ibn Rush psychology. I will get back and explain further about this on my other main idea. So in this book, Ibn Rush explain in detail his understanding of the essence of creation in deep and what are some of the problems that occur in the concept of creation. For example, according to physics, how does one find things that are both moving and move at once and things that only move? 
So Ibn Rush proved that there must be something that imparts motion but is never moved in the cosmological sphere. And he and other commenters in this book um, came into terms that something that controls the motion in the cosmos is what they call as the prime mover or God. So you can see the difference here between physics and metaphysics. Physics provides proof for the existence of prime mover while metaphysics is concerned with the action of this mover. Hence, for Ibn Rush, he believes that the prime mover must be eternal and real. So the action from the prime mover must be continuous and eternal, infinite. It is not enough with just giving a push to the physical and celestial worlds all alone. Of course, the idea of actuality as the source of everything is contrary to the common sense of idea that potentiality is prior to actuality. It is like an actual man, an actual human being has been a man in potentiality from embryo and sperm before being actualized as a human being. Second main idea from the book, Ibn Rush discovers how metaphysics covers both sensible and eternal substances. Substance here means that where the subject matter overlaps with physics. As an example, in the, cosmo, in the cosmology, there are two classes of eternal things, the essentially eternal and the numerical internal. These two classes represent separation between celestial realms, which is alam semesta, and the physical universe, which is alam physical. So these two categories represent the separation between celestial realm and physical universe where the living beings in the physical universe are bound to an eternal cycle of generation and corruption while the celestial realm are immortal beings. So from here, Ibn Rush concluded that these two matters do not mean the cause of the world or the reason of the world but rather the motion of these bodies are the principle of what occurs on the earth. Third main point, main idea from the book, Ibn Rush in this book briefly discusses also about psychology in metaphysics. Okay, you, you might be wondering how does psychology has any correlation with metaphysics? Yes, although psychology and metaphysics is two different subjects, we're all aware of that, but in this book, under the subtopic of human and divine intellect, uh, it deals with two different things, which is the question about human's intellect immortality and the nature of divine intellect. So, in the beginning of this discussion, Ibn Rush begins by quoting one of the answer from Alexander in his book of Reductio at Absurdum that the combination of two active intellect, human's active intellect and material intellect can be immortal. But in this case, Ibn Rush reject the idea by saying that if human and divine intellect is combined, it cannot be eternal because human's active intellect is not fixed. It can be changing any time. And it, and it is also exposed with corruption and negativity. So let's say, let's say if divine intellect is generated in human's mind, then the previous, which is the human's active intellect, is destroyed, is rejected. So it cannot be used and it cannot be eternal. So that, that is for the human's intellect part. For the divine intellect, Ibn Rush said that divine intellect can be achieved in the state of eternal bliss, in which it can be felt by the heavens. The reason why the bliss, the eternal bliss can be enjoyed by the heavens is because heavenly body is infinite, is eternal. But human with active intellect is not because we are united with different views and corruption of thinking. So it cannot be internal at all. In conclusion, throughout the whole book of um, Ibn Rush Metaphysics and his overall achievement, Ibn Rush is known as someone who have restored Aristotle's work in its purity, which it can be easier to, be, uh, to understand and enjoy by people in the West. So, majority of Ibn Rush's work is preserved not in Arabic language but in Hebrew and Latin so that the people in the West can easily understand what he, uh, what he is trying to convey. Thus, uh, making all of his work become one of the main links between the Greek in the medieval and the Greek and the medieval philosophy between East and the West. So, uh, 
thank you so much for listening that's all from me thank you to quote one short passage as an example of the evolution inside that's this 55 aristotle says and the anagor says that good is a principle as mover for the intellect in part motion but it imparts motion because of something Therefore, he said something different, although it is similar to what we say because medicine is, in a way, help and it impossible to that the contrary of good and of the internet should not come into being. Ibn Rush put his own viewpoint on the metaphysics of Aristotle in a passage teaching Algoras does. Aristotle commented on good is a principle as mover because internet imparts motion of all things, but Algoras did not say for what reason it in this case, Ibn Rush explained that in part motion must be because of something and which is in part motion is good in a higher degree than the good in part in motion. This movement has proven that he gave theories because he had to state other principles. In contrast to their theory that the prime mover provides perfection and solution. Given an example, we discover that medicine in part motion to an extent since it in part movement toward health and the form of health is medicine. If health were not in the substratum, medicine like the prime mover as a motion agent and the end can impart motion together in both sides. Algorithms also state that it is unlikely that the opposite of good and intellect does not come into being. According to Ibn Rushd, this statement can be interpreted that the intelligence that is positive and good does not jointly influence both contraries together, such as good and evil that is suspicion outcome. Thank you. In conclusion, throughout the whole reviewing of Ibn Rush metaphysic book, we have dealt that this book deals with many aspects of metaphysic sites. It feels very honored for us to be chosen as the group on doing Ibn Rush. Well, Ibn Rushd is a great figure of philosophy that he uncovers another side of Aristotle's writing or thinking regarding metaphysics. On the bright side, the discussion of metaphysics is endless as it has different kinds of views from different philosophers and thinkers from each time. Thank you.